Hello, and welcome to Community Connections. My name is Addison Davis, Superintendent of Schools of Clay County. In this session of Community Connections, we'll talk about pressing issues and topics surrounding school choice, controlled open enrollment, along with looking at information recently gathered from a survey extended to our community relating to school choice pathways within our schools. This month, we have Coordinator of School Choice, Karen McMillan, along with Terry Dennis, Chief of Staff. As you know, school choice continues to grow legs across the nation and really pushes organizations to think differently about what educational offerings we offer to our learners every single day and what pathways we offer as well. Our job as educational leaders is to make certain that we are making certain that our students are prepared every single day to either become full graduate options related to military, college, or the workforce. As we talk about school choice, school choice has continued to expand in Clay County, Ms. McMillan. Can we talk about what school choice is and if there's any misconceptions related to school choice? So the whole purpose of school choice is to improve student outcome by giving parents a wider range of educational options so that they can look for options that are a good fit for their child. And currently, parents have more options than ever before. We have our district managed public schools, we have our public charter schools, virtual schools, home school, private school, and now we even have the extra layer of controlled open enrollment. So currently, when we look at Clay County as being one of those choice options, we know that Clay County District Managed Schools is eight. We're, we're eighth. We're top 10 in the we state are. of Florida. We Our graduation rate's higher than it's ever been before. We're top 20 in the state for graduation for our ELLs, our ESE, and our at-risk students. One of your initiatives was to put art and music in all of our schools in the district. Uh, we have accelerated learning college pathways at all of our high schools. The learning that's occurring in our district managed public schools is amazing. I, I would agree. We've had so many successes recently, uh, you know, with, uh, with movement academics, but our pathways are getting better every single day. Clay County really has great anchor academies within every one of our high schools. And as we continue to grow and evolve in our system, we really want to focus on our junior high schools and our elementaries as well. As we talk about school choice, in the last couple of years, how's it kind of evolved, not only throughout the state nationally, but also locally as well for us in Clay County? So historically, locally, um, choice, choice has been available at the high school level through CTEs, the career and technical education, and through accelerated learning. And as you said, it's our initiative, it's, it's a goal of ours to move these choice options down to the junior high and elementary level, creating these pathways that students can enter in kindergarten and follow all the way through to graduation. Yeah, it's very important. While we do a beautiful job in our high school settings, we have to get better in related to what course offerings we have in junior high school and elementary. Right. We want to see pure continuity from K-12 where our kids really can find somewhere in their heart that they really want to study and that we have robust programs that's really trying to get our 21st century learner ready and prepared. Right. Overall, we're trying to create uh, you know, learners and prepare them for jobs that do not even exist today. And if we do that by having robust programs and having critical thinkers and problem solvers and decision makers, let them think uh, you know, analytically, then I think we'll be able to prepare them to be successful. Research says that students who have and uh, you know are select uh, you know a educational offering or choice offering have positive impacts on their academics and on their mindset. Can you speak to that? So we know that all children do not come to school with this, the equal amount of resources and the same needs and the same interests. And the benefit to having school choice options is that it allows us to create curriculums and ed educational experiences that will cater to these needs, that will cater to these interests. We are also able to build communities within and around our schools because when families, when parents, when students pick choices and they work they become more engaged and more engaged increases test scores, increases graduation. And with that also comes an increase in civic mindedness and an right. overall satisfaction. And this, all of these put kids on a pathway to success. Right. Well said. You know, we talk about the, the impacts and the positivity that it brings to our learners where they can really, and their parents, and they can select an environment that's best for them. We see that it creates pride and ownership as well. And in Clay County, we will continue to evolve and create more choice and offerings so that we can have attractive, uh, effective academic experiences for our kids. 
Can you speak to some of the programs we currently offer and we aspire to offer in the future? So at the high school level, like I said, we do currently offer our CTEs, and our CTE department looks to stay cutting edge and is constantly looking to build programs that suit our community, that suit our families. Um, Accelerated learning, we're always looking at improving our offerings at that level. At the junior high school level this year, we added our first pre-ACE program that will feed into at Lakeside, at Lakeside Junior High School, and it'll feed into Fleming Island High School's ACE program. And we're looking at increasing those opportunities at the junior high school level over the next couple of years. Right. And at elementary, we have a concept school in Orange Park Elementary, right. but we also have a Montessori school, our first yeah. Montessori yeah. school. Really cool for, kickoff this year. It, it was a great kickoff. Yeah. They're sitting at capacity with a waiting list. Wow. Yeah, and it's for parents who are looking for an right. alternative learning environment for their children. Absolutely. So uh, a lot of cool things going yeah. on in Clay County surrounding choice. We know for the first time ever in the last two years, we have an accelerated program at every one of our high schools for our learners. We see that uh, uh, unbelievable CTE programming at our schools from aerospace to agriculture to health science to building design to carpentry. We have it all. So, um, you. you know, hats off to that department, our yeah. teachers who work so hard to prepare our students that we have great internships and externships for our students as well. And we will continue to expose them to great offerings. As we talk about growing this initiative within our schools, we need, we, 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 you know, for futuristic mindsets, there's a lot of, uh, you know, highlights we'd like to talk about. And uh, we'll be getting to the, into the weeds of the board in a workshop next month to talk about how we grow gifted and talented, how we grow acceleration programs in elementary and junior high school as well. And then looking at uh, having concepts, expanding concept schools in our school district. So thank you. So now transition to controlled open enrollment. You know, they start in January 21st. It's school choice week from a national perspective. National school choice week. And uh, controlled open enrollment is an initiative that uh, is brought two years ago by state statute. And this is requirements for the school districts to somewhat select and identify a threshold uh, linked to capacity for all of our schools. So for schools, for those of you who don't understand controlled open enrollment, we'll speak to it in just a minute. But uh, we had to identify a percentage for utilization. That means uh, that we had to identify a you know, seat capacity level, determine whether or not we have seats available in our schools. In our school district in Clay County, we have established an 85% threshold that identifies whether or not we have available seating. Therefore, any school that has a capacity over 85% will not be open and linked to controlled open enrollment. However, if they're under 85% capacity, then we do have available seatings. So controlled open enrollment, what does that mean, Ms. Dennis? And Ms. Dennis takes on a lot of responsibilities, you know, dealing with me every single day, but uh, she's linked and connected to instruction and so many responsibilities in this district. So controlled open enrollment is one of those things. So, you know, what does that mean to our community? This is actually our third year of controlled open enrollment in Clay County. And so we average about the same amount of schools open each year. We've kept the 85% um, threshold consistent. And it's basically just another avenue for students in Clay County, their parents and surrounding counties to look for another educational opportunity outside of their zone neighborhood school. Um, Parents could choose a different school based on choice programs. Sometimes it could be availability, like that's a school right near where I work and it would be so convenient just for transportation purposes. Um, And we are open um, first for uh, students and residents of our county and then our surrounding counties as well for everybody to apply. Yeah, it's it's coming on board. And um, so we talk about the application process, and uh, I believe it's going to launch on the 21st of January, and it will close on February the 22nd. So, what, you know, how do parents start to look to identify what's opening, what's the application process, what can they look for in that application window? So our application is online. We do have the option for um, a printed application that if you would like to mail into the district office, we also have that application fully in Spanish as well to meet all of our uh, citizens' needs. With that application, it is about a three-page application with some information where we do verify your address, your student, um, current student, if there's siblings involved, if you are military, because there are some processes with the lottery that you do get priority. If you are currently a student that is up for expulsion, we do have some questions about that as well because we do have some parameters on that. So the application will be live on our website on Monday, January 21st, which is the kickoff of National School Choice Week. It will be up for a full month to apply. So you just need to apply once and then once you apply, you're in. And then each school that is open for controlled open enrollment will be hosting parent nights, 
tour nights. We have a website that you will link to with the application. So if you want to kind of see what this school is about, you can go check out, see one of the dates, go on a tour and see if it's a good fit for your child and your family. Awesome. I think it's really good the, the fact that uh, when we go to open schools who qualify under the threshold of 85%, that parents really take advantage of our tours so they can get to understand staff, the direction, the academics, and whether or not that's the right climate that has the right core values for their learners. Now, we have 42 schools in our district, mm -hmm. and uh, so I want to make certain that we talk about what schools are, are eligible for our parents and our students and what schools may not be eligible. So we know that all 42 schools do not meet the threshold. So what schools will be offered, um, will be offering controlled open enrollment this year for, for the 2019-2020 school year? Yes, so this is again for next school year. Um, we have 11 schools that are open. We have six elementary schools, two junior high and three high schools. Our elementary <laughs> schools are Argyle Elementary with 20 available seats. Coppergate Elementary with 30 available seats, Fleming Island Elementary with 55 available seats, Lakeside Elementary with 64 available seats, S. Brian Jennings with 43 available seats, Chatillon Elementary with 30 available seats. So we do have about uh, a little over 200 available seats at the elementary level, and that is K through 6 um, in Clay County. I know for some surrounding counties it's a little different with 6th grade. And then this is for kindergarten. It's not for VPK, so I do want to stress that it is kindergarten through sixth grade for the elementary. For our junior high, it is a traditional junior high of just seventh and eighth. That's Lakeside Junior and Orange Park Junior. They are uh, both open with 100 seats available at each school. And our senior highs for 9 through 12, we have Clay High with 133 available seats, Orange Park High with 366 available seats, and Ridgeview High with 350 seats available. Yeah, so close to 1,300 seats available yes. in Clay County. Uh, that is, you know, completely attractive to residents uh, within our county and potential surrounding residents as well. Uh, for those who, uh, students uh, and parents who apply, once they apply, what's next? What, is, what should they expect? So once you apply um, through the window, we actually um, – We'll be sending out a email toward the end of March. That will be whether if you've been accepted or if there's a wait list or a rejection based on if there's a lottery. So some of our schools, um, if I take Argyle Elementary, for example, they have 20 seats open. If only 18 students apply, all 18 students would be able to get in because they did not need to have a lottery. If I have 30 students apply, then we will need to do a lottery. We will accept 20. We will send out an email basically saying these are the 20 that have received acceptance for 1920 school year. And then we have a wait list for the remaining remainder of students that way. Right. And the, the lottery process is, uh, you know, is somewhat established by the state. Mm -hmm. There's a number of indicators. So those individuals who seek to apply and they have more students than we have seats and the lottery process will be in place and it's defined by state statute. Therefore, and they, it'll go in rank order in the sense if you are have military orders and you've moved and you have first priority, then they'll look at uh, you know anybody that's had moved due to foster care. And then this, the next uh, prong is linked to individuals that um, have been court ordered to move or, or a placement for a particular school. Then we'll go to Clay County residents, and then afterwards we'll go to outside residents as well. So there's a criterion that will be spelled out completely on our website as we continue to launch this. So continue to go to oneclay.net so we have information forthcoming. So thank you, Ms. Dennis. So back to school choice. And, um, you know, we talk about, you know, how do we continue to make certain we prepare learners for the 21st century and for jobs that do not exist today? You know, what do we do? So what we did recently is that we extended a survey to all of our stakeholders in our community to figure out what they actually would like to see within our schools. So from, from your perspective, is, is there, it, from that survey, any information that you believe by grade band or, or by, uh, you know, by grade band that you really want to share that you found uh, fascinating or exciting from, from the information collected? Well, what was exciting is that we're on a pathway that suits our family's wants and needs. That's very important. It, it is important. At the elementary and junior high school level, we saw a commonality of both of them wanting, or a, a good number of parents from both levels wanting accelerated learning opportunities. Yeah. And we're already putting these this into motion. We have them wanting STEAM opportunities. And STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And this is an instructional method, as you said, that builds our workforce of tomorrow. That's right. 
So it's no wonder that parents want to see more of this instruction. And we have a junior high school that's looking at creating this program and working with all of the elementary schools that feed into it. Right. So it's exciting. Yeah, it is. And uh, you know, many thanks to all the parents that yeah. took the time to complete the survey. It gives us really uh, you know, a lot of information so we can make informed decisions and we can, we can use that body of work to identify what we can do locally in order to uh, in, enhance experiences for our learners. You know, one thing I did see is that at the elementary level, they they wanted some dual language to be a part of the process. So really cool takeaway. They any, do. Any, any viewpoints on that perspective? They do. So we're actually looking into successful dual language programs across the state to see how we can implement yeah. that here in our district. Yeah. So that was exciting. Maybe we can offer some more variety at the high school sure. level. Yeah, re really neat and yeah. uh, intriguing information. So. We'll put that uh, live as well on the Controlled Open Enrollment uh, website so they can see what their findings will be. When we talk about the, um, you know, there's so many things we want to do as it relates to creating choice. And you know, I've always spoke about how we can have a visual performing arts. What do we do to have a pre-Cambridge program within our elementary model that feeds up to our ACE programs right. and IB, you know, pre-IB and early age IBs and our elementaries and our junior high schools and, uh, and make certain that we have really robust initiatives for our kids and we keep them and we attract newcomers as well but that's going to take money and that's going to take time you know uh any thoughts about you know how we make this happen in in, in the near future for our, for our community so when we look at funding a successful program we're, we're really looking at four things we look at getting highly trained teachers be it through like if we're looking at a school of arts we have to hire trained teachers when we're looking at a STEAM program, we train a cohort of teachers. We have to look at curriculum and purchasing curriculum for each of these programs. We look at the learning materials and resources that are required for these successful programs. And lastly, sometimes even the facility needs to get altered. We have to look at storage or performance areas. So if we want, you get what you pay for. That's right. And if we want cutting edge, we're going to have to pay for it. Absolutely. So we, we've got to look into grants that support these right. initiatives. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Whether it's grants or additional revenue streams from the community, right. we have to think differently to evolve and mm -hmm. have attractive facilities that meet the needs of these programs in order to prepare them and, and also follow their passions. You know, so uh, look forward to what's coming for the future in Clay County. We know that, uh, you know, we have a lot on our plates, but... We are really committed to make certain that we have cutting edge opportunities for every learner every single day within our school district. As superintendent, uh, you know, this has been a priority of mine. We will continue to grow. We're looking at, at, at potentially identifying national models through CTE programs and expanding the CTE initiatives, but at the same time making sure that that expansion goes all the way down to the kindergarten age and through elementary, the transition to junior high. But more importantly, making certain that we do everything in the lockstep with our parents and our students and our teachers' voice and the board's voice to make sure we're getting it right uh, every single day in Clay County. So thank you for this session. The, uh, well, once again, a reminder of controlled open enrollment, as Ms. Dennis spoke about. It opens on January 21st and will close on February the 22nd. Again, we will make certain that we get all information about those who have been accepted by uh, starting around March 22nd and beyond. So look forward for more information to come. We'll have more marketing information about this initiative in order to create excitement around Clay County District Schools. Next month is we'll talk about uh, math adoption that we just adopted last night at our school board, the new math adoption process. What does that mean for students? What does that mean for teachers? And what does that mean for parents? How do we help? And then we'll look at some of the record high graduation rates that were just established uh, last month within Clay County District Schools. Thank you for being connected. Thank you for allowing me to lead and I look forward to seeing you next time.